Hello, hello, this is Jared Krebs. I am super excited about today's Living a Course in Miracles call. Today is Friday, September 28th, and we're gonna start the call off like we always do, which is by stating your name, what city you're in, why you're excited about today's call. If you're watching this recording, feel free to find us on Facebook under Living a Course in Miracles Audio Book Club. That is where we are at Facebook. That's where we hang out and chat and talk and these recordings are posted. And uh, I'm in San Antonio and I'm excited about today's call because of the great content. It was very interesting. Yes, I listened to all four of the videos, so I'm ready to talk. And um, I guess I'm also excited just to, to see your lovely smiling faces, those of you who are on this live call, my friends. So I'm happy to be here with all of you. And uh, so let's go to the next person. Tell us where you're calling in from and why you're excited about today's call and your name. I will say things. Hi, I'm Angela Irving and I'm in Austin, Texas in my living room. And um, I'm excited because I almost felt like I was in music school again, but Ken Wachnick was my teacher. <laughs> right. Like, whoa, this is like, so many aspects of my life stuck together. It's funny. So it was really cool. Yay. Well, welcome, Angela. Nice to see you again in a Thank house. You. Yes. It will probably be a habit at this point. <laughs> oh, okay. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right. Who's next? Hi, this is me, Linda Pettigrew. I'm calling in from uh, Lancaster, California. Hi. Hi, Linda. Welcome. Good to see your smiling face. <laughs> All right. Who's next, Christian or Nathan? That was Crystal. You heard the squeaking door. <laughs> Hi, Crystal. She walked out. I don't know where she went. I'll tell her you said hi. Okay. So Christian or Nathan, are you able to say hello? What up? <laughs> what up? It's Nathan in Minneapolis. I'm excited to be here because I felt like I was back in music school, except with Kenneth Wapnick as my teacher. That's oh. what I said. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I don't know, this, this video has meant a lot to me, so um, it's cool. Thanks. Awesome. You, you moved back from Lancaster, California, to back to Minnesota? I'm back. Didn't awesome. like it. <laughs> Christian. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. uh, my name is Christian Stanbury, Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I'm super excited about today's call because I'm super excited about salvation. <laughs> nice haircut, kind of, bro. Kind of southern a little bit there. <laughs> you know, I always tell people when I'm serving them at my tables, you know, the more I hang out with y'all southerners, man, the more I start to pick up your accent. Wow, you speak God. good. Speak good. <laughs> <laughs> I like your haircut, too. Oh, thanks, dude. Yeah. Fly. <laughs> Thank you. Fly. Not everyone can pull that off. I can't pull that that haircut off. I, I wanted to one day. I wanted to have like a part with it all shaped. It doesn't mm -hmm. work for on my for my head, but <laughs> I'm not wrong, bro. Chris, we that's love more, it. That's more professional, anyways, Jerry. Yeah, man. I know, bro, but it's still cool what you got going on. So keep it up. Thank you. All <laughs> right. So let's start. Uh, let's start with. Um, I guess I'll start sharing like I always do. Um, I. I listened to this, uh, all four recordings yesterday, all in a row. And I really like how Ken Wapnick combines the Course in Miracles, like the development of the Course in Miracles through like the development of Beethoven's works and how his Beethoven's earlier works were, I guess, more, you know, I don't want to say ego based, but as, as Beethoven evolved, his works became more and more like the light and the joy and all this. And um, I guess it was just cool to see him draw all these parallels. I really wanted to like go and listen to these, these works from Beethoven and Wagner and, and you know, the other ones he talked about.
because um, I wanted to kind of hear what he was talking about. I mean, Ken Wapnick's obviously a very deep guy and he's just very, you know, aware, especially with this music. So it was cool to, to, to know that Ken's like such an avid musician. I wonder if he played an instrument. Um, do you know, does anyone know? The clarinet. Oh, really? Uh... <laughs> How did you know that? Uh, I'm just a wealth of information. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> um, and uh, what else, what else? Um, I also liked how he talked about Wagner and how like Wagner wouldn't go there. Like he wouldn't go to the joyous place because maybe he wasn't ready to. Schubert. What? Schubert said that. Oh, Schubert. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. Wagner was, was later on in, in the last recordings. Yeah. I'm, I'm still in all y'all's thunder, but, but I'm sure you have your own, your own things to say. So I'm just going to say them. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, I see lots of notes. Okay, for you. Um, but but um, Schubert, thank you. So Schubert wouldn't go there. Schubert died one year after Beethoven, but Schubert's was all dark and he kind of, there was this sadness and you know, we can all relate to the sadness because of our human experience. But, but Schubert wasn't ready to like let that go, but Beethoven was. And then Wagner at the end was the one that was like, you gotta know the mellows. You have to know the underlying the underlying melody behind the symphony. And that is in course terms, you listening, you got to be able to listen. And I mean, yeah, I guess I got to go listen to these things, you know, because <laughs> I'm interested in this music. But the main thing I got about applying it to my course work is, um, is basically listening, you know, listening to somebody and, and, and looking for the, the content of shared interests, looking at somebody as a, uh, as, as perfect spirit and looking past the body and, and looking at what we, ha we have in common, which is uh, the, the need to be enlightened and, the, and also the ego mind. We both have those things in common. Or we have, you know, the, the God, the Holy Spirit thought system and the ego thought system. But seeing those shared interests and looking at people that way and just truly listening, that was my takeaway as far as how it uh, applies to the course. So I wanna listen to him again but I wasn't able to, but I'm glad I got to listen to him one time. And great choice, Angela slash Christian, on the content. So um, that's all I got to say. Who's next? What was your highlights from? I'm going to go next because okay. I took some serious notes. So I'll just kind of like be the outline. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like This is what he said, basically. So um, I listened to them just right before this. And I didn't get... Um, the last five minutes of the last video. So I won't have any outline for that, but it, you know, I got the rest of like 35 awesome. minutes of everything. Yeah, so um, can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. Or do I need to turn this up? Okay. Um, so the first one is, uh, the first thing that really stuck out to me was, if we can't be more loving, more kind, more gentle with each other, um, then there's no point in anything in this course. Which oh, yeah. really really struck me because, I mean, I guess this goes into the field because I, I was totally like being all judgy <laughs> earlier today. So I was like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> if you can't hear what's happening in the other person, instead of helping, you may end up reinforcing the very problem that you're committing to undoing. You're committed to undoing. Mm, yeah, true. Very, very important. Um, and he, he said that music led him to the course. He believes that music led him to the course. And I was like, ah, ah, so exciting. Um, and yeah, he, that's uh, right. Oh, he talked about yeah. him being a clinical psychologist. I totally forgot all about that. Yeah. Yeah. He said that he had two different tracks going on at the same time. He had like this world of music and, and listening and um, various things that would kind of influence that world. But then he had his like clinical psychology world. Um, that was completely separate, it felt like, um, graduate school and whatnot. So, um, and I thought it was funny, he said he read all the Freud things that he could, which is what led him to be a clinical psychologist. Um, but he said he, yeah, he read Interpretation of Dreams when he was 16, and I tried to read that when I was 16 too. I was like, oh, what? You know. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, didn't understand a lot of it. Um, <laughs> uh, about, <laughs> um, about the same time he got into classical music around 15 or 16 second or third year of high school um, Beethoven he said was his spiritual guide 
Um, you can trace his spiritual development throughout his life um, and his music. Um, the early period, like you were talking about this, Jared, um, early period, he was looking at the material world, the material eyes. It was very structured, very like Mozart and Haydn, um, like you could expect what was going to happen. Um, the middle period is when he was looking at the spiritual universe with material eyes. And this is where his most popular music came from. Um, most accessible, you can feel the power, the beauty, and the development um, of how he's going from one piece to the other, he said. Um, and it's a window to the soul, or I guess I guess all of it was kind of a window to the soul. Um, and then his late period, says, was when he looked at the spiritual world, world through spiritual eyes. Um, and in Ken's opinion, that's the best music ever written, um, except Mozart, because he's on a completely different playing field, <laughs> apparently. Um, <clears throat> And uh, I remember, like, this was from another video, but because it's all like basically the same thing, but it was from another video where there was a conductor that said that Beethoven's music reached heaven, but Mozart, Mozart's music came from heaven, which that, that makes sense. Um, and he, said, he, talked, said that? he said that he wrote a, a conductor said that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. He didn't, he, well, he just quoted it. Quoted so, it. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, and he was talking about the last quartets of Beethoven, um, that he could tell that Beethoven knew where, where it was, like he knew that those quartets were where it was at, but he didn't really know, like when he first started listening to them, he was like, I'm not ready for these and I don't really understand them, but I know there's something here that is where it's at. Um, he said they were a lighthouse for him. Everything in his life was getting him closer to be able to hear what was going on in that music. So that was yeah. the end of part one. And then part two, he was talking about um, the quartets 12 through 16 are Beethoven's last quartets, but the most important ones are 13, 14, 15. The 15th was actually the first one, then the 13th, and then the 14th in actual order he wrote them. Um, they're really the end of the journey. Um, the, the, he was saying that they, these um, personified, they are, they, they are the end of the journey. And he said he was at... Um, Juilliard, I think, listening to the 14th um, quartet in C sharp minor. He says that that's the acme of all of them. It starts with a fugue. Boring. Oh my God, you're the one that chose these. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. It just sounds Wait. so much like school, right? Like, no, I know, like, but I like mean. I'm paying attention, but it's like. Is this, is this still <laughs> Beethoven in C sharp minor? Yes. Like, this is like his last, Sorry, this is like his last um, stuff, right? Yeah, it's um, the Jeez, Christian second to last, the second to last quartet. <laughs> oh my God, stop! <laughs> okay, sorry, go on. You're making it go longer, you. <laughs> okay, so oh, okay, it starts with a fugue. <laughs> that was my my thinking. Hum, um, starts with a fugue. Uh, it's the closest rendering to what heaven is actually like. Um, the peace that passeth understanding. Um, it's unusual in its form. It's seven movements that just kind of ooze together. Um, and so he realized after he had that, he had this experience of joining this feeling that he was part of something that, that he couldn't describe. And the next day he said he wanted to have the experience that he had just had listening to those, that quartet. Um, transfer over into everyday life. He was like, I need to figure out how to do that. Um, let's see. And this was the first time he felt it was important for him to combine the two tracks of his life. Uh, yeah. And then like he mentioned Schubert dying in 1828. He only lived 31 years. He was really sad. Beethoven died in 1827. They're buried side by side, which is really interesting. Um, Schubert idolized Beethoven because he went somewhere that Schubert couldn't go. Um, and uh, he was, he was talking about when he listened to Schubert and it was just really super sad. And he like, he, he could hear the block. Um, he could hear him some, saying, I can't go, I can't go where, I can't go somewhere. I can't go to this other place. Mm -hmm. um, and even he said, if you listen very carefully, you can hear the soul in the music and in everybody you're talking to. Um, let's see. Yeah, I just said that. Um, Oh yeah, and he was talking about this um, psychology guy um, who wrote about schizophrenia and how he was saying the schizophrenia is like a break that people take from the world and they, they go on a journey and it's 
the psych, the therapist's job to take them through that journey. Um, and he said, there's one guy that was reading about, um, that wrote about, he saw a light in his journey, but he knew he couldn't go there. And he was like, oh my gosh, that's like the same thing that Schubert was not being able to do. Mm -hmm. um, so now, yes, part three is all about Wagner. <laughs> um, yeah, on conducting was the essay he wrote. Um, some of this is about, you know, music history. Don't want a poor Christian. <laughs> no, not at all. This is really interesting. <laughs> uh, please continue. Okay. So um, he was talking about Beethoven's Eroica symphony marked the end of the classical period because it just like shattered the form um, of the classical period. Um, that it was more about the expression of feeling than it was about following a certain form. And then Wagner shattered romanticism. It was the beginning of romanticism. Sh Wagner shattered romanticism because he went even further with expressing the emotions and just like broke all the walls of romanticism by using all these crazy chords that no one knew how to understand. Um, and he was also influential as a conductor. He started a whole new school of conducting. Um, and this is where the word melos came in. It was, um, he believed that conducting was more about, more than just keeping time, which Mendelssohn was the epitome of apparently. Um, and he said that it's really, really important that you penetrate the soul of the music, the, the melos of the music, um, behind the notes of rhythm, rhythms, you have to listen to the, the melody that is, you know, the entire thing. Um, let's see. Uh, you can't know the tempo unless you know the melos. What's in the music is not to be found in the notes. If you don't hear the inner melody, um, what you hear may be accurate, but it, may, it will be wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really interesting. Um, la, la, la. Wagner was talking about content over form. Mm -hmm. um, he said there was only one right way to perform Beethoven. You have to get the underlying melody. This started a whole new school of conducting, and the two schools were kind of against each other. Toscanini was tyrannically faithful to the everything that was written on the page, and I couldn't I, I couldn't understand what the name that he was saying, like Furt Weigler or something. He was saying it so fast, I was like, oh. was the other guy who was like Wagner school. Um, Wagner was the first person who introduced rubato into music, which is robbing one part of the measure for the other. That was interesting. Um, translated to psychotherapy, he said. It's all about listening. Um, so that you're responding to the inner music, not what people are saying or what they're doing. And that really struck me uh -huh. because the, the person that I was feeling really super judgy about earlier today, I was like, she is crying for help. She's crying for love. And that's, she might, I might be really annoyed by her, but she's crying out for love. So, um, yeah. And listening, yeah. uh, listening without wanting something in return or without an ulterior motive, just listening. Yeah, yeah. And he also said, judgment interferes with your being able to hear the melos, which is very true. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and that was the end of part three. Part four, um, the first half, um, everyone has within him or her the song of love. Um, it's a song without words, melody, or notes. Jesus talks about the forgotten song. Um, our song is the song of a oneness or self. It has nothing to do with this world. Um, that's the song that Beethoven found. And this is where he said, the other conductor that said, um, Beethoven's music reaches heaven, and which is the attainment of heaven. But Mozart's music is like plucked down from heaven. Um, the reason that we are all here is that we're terrified of that song. Oh yeah. <laughs> Forgot yeah. That too. Yeah. So what you hear from people is the block of, from that song. All blocks are expressions of fear. The core of every dream is fear. The ultimate yeah. fear is letting that song being who we are. But we like being a note. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, we can't be on all the time. He's like, we want to be a note. We want to be very specific and very orderly. <laughs> and then that's where it's at. <laughs> for me anyway yeah this is good thanks for taking such detailed notes you really jogged my memory like on the whole thing you're welcome a student a student man <laughs> a plus 4.0 <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's right, that's right. That's right. <laughs> all right cool thank you angela
You're Bye. welcome. Okay, who's next? I'm just going to listen the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> the art of listening. Music may loss and miracles. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the first three videos out of the four were mostly like, yeah, about music education I found. But, um, and I watched them a few times. Um, and Angela, you like pick out so many more details than I do. That was pretty awesome. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, but... But uh, I think that this whole presentation of eight videos, because we're going to do the next four videos next week, um, is all going to come together. Um, the, the, the fourth video, I can see more him, him starting to kind of like summarize why he gave us a lot of information about Beethoven, Wagner, and, and the other guys. Schubert. Um, Schubert. <clears throat> and then those two other ones. <laughs> Whatever. Um, but... <clears throat> Um, it was still really interesting to listen to. Not boring. I was just kidding, guys. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, but I did find that that fourth video, um, it all starts to come together more about like, about like listening to the inner melody um, in others and the symphony that we play together um, and just listening to, just listening and, and yeah, he was talking about psychotherapy, about um, the psychiatrist or the psychologist, um, like listening to the patient and that patient will tell you what they're feeling. And I, <clears throat> and I have done some uh, uh, therapy um, as the patient and I really did have a lot of respect for my um, uh, psychiatrist um, <clears throat> and sometimes I was aware of myself giving him those messages and I was aware of the messages he was giving me, even though the, the form was totally different than the content. I was aware, like I was panicking about something I did and, and then I could see him like, kind of like he just brushed it aside. He, he was facing the other way. He's just like, yeah, okay. Okay. And then he like totally changes the conversation. And I was like waiting for like two months to tell him that, but it was like, he was basically telling me like, so move on, you know, or whatever the content was like, it's okay. <laughs> you know? And, yeah, so it's pretty cool. I really enjoyed that. And I'm excited to watch the last four videos too. <laughs> Sweet. There's four more I forgot. <laughs> that's really, that's awesome. The, um, thanks for sharing that experience too on being in the actual environment with, you know, therapists. That's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? Um... No, not for now. Thanks. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Linda or Nathan, who's next? Hey. Nathan's no. next. Hey. He beat you to the punchline there, Linda. Um, so first of all, um, Angela, I love it when you come to the calls because <laughs> your notes are fucking amazing. You said a lot of stuff that I missed while I was listening to it in the bathtub. <laughs> So, nice. um, I don't have a, a lot to add. Um, the, only, the main thing I wanted to just reiterate that um, Jared already said is that if you are listening to someone and you have a need and you're like, there's something that you need from them that is, you know, the form of whatever the form of specialness is that's, that's taking place, then you can't really hear them. And I was like, wow, that's intense because I feel like a lot of my emotional issues that I deal with come from um, judging the things that people say are around me to be something about me. And so I was like, wow, it's going to feel like only after you meet someone for like five seconds can you, you know, not need anything from them, like a total stranger. Like I, I can't think of anyone else in my life where that I don't feel like I talk to them and somehow I need something from them. So I thought that was, that was important for me to hear. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything else from the videos I was going to share. Thanks. Sweet. Great, great point, Nathan. It is. It's truly about just being present with someone. And, and uh, sometimes that's hard to do too. And when you're in sales, cause you want 
them to buy whatever you're selling in my case. And it's like, no, just gotta, just gotta listen. <laughs> but it applies to everything. But thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, and I'll just say one more thing that I, you, you see that happen, you know, when you, anytime you are trying to, uh, I don't know, get support for anything, sales for something or trying to get someone to come to your side of, you know, the line or, or support the project that you're working on. And yeah, it's, it's like anytime you really need it. Um, and it just, it makes it so much harder to actually be present with that person. And then also it makes usually them push away, you know, it's like two magnets, you know, of, oh, yeah. of instead of, you know, the, the best times, like, I mean, the best example is pretty crude, but, the first thing that comes to mind is that, you know, I finally had sex for the first time and lost my virginity when I didn't want to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and there's so many more examples, but that's like, it's the first one. I it just came to you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> finally <laughs> happened when I was like, didn't care. And you were just cool with it, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, awesome, bro. Thanks for sharing that. It's wonderful. And, and uh, I do have to say that, that uh, I'm obviously studying sales and being in this industry, whatever, like it's definitely possible to just be present and let go of, of the outcome and just the best people at this, at that game sell a ton of stuff just because of, of their beingness and their willingness to be present without caring if someone buys or not, you know, in a way, but they still want them to buy. But anyway, another topic, but very much about listening for sure. I think it has to do with, with attract, attracting the opposite sex too, though. Like, you know, dating and all that stuff is very much an energy business. You got to be cool. You got to be collective. Energy you, gotta, business. you gotta, you have to be, uh, yeah. Locked in. All right. Who's next? <laughs> I think Linda has yet to go. <laughs> Linda. Linda, Linda. There you go. I'll make right. sure I'll break this thing right. Oh, okay, I saw the uh, three videos this morning. And, um, and they were very good. So hopefully I'm explaining it the best I can. Um, the first video about mental illness, and that's, um, you use the light of God when you do anything in your life. You just carry that light of God within you as you go out your life, and that'll help you. And we all have um, <laughs> like this level of um, how much we know about life in school and all of that, you know, we're all different. So it doesn't matter if you're a local idiot or you're Einstein, you know. You just keep the uh, light of God within you, and that'll help you on your journey. And me, I'm from New York, and I got my GED in 1994, and I do the best I can. I also do the 12-step programs. And um, what is the box? people keep texting me on my phone. I'm sorry. And for myself, I mean, I like to keep that light of God within me. And me, I have bipolar, anger disorder, and major depression. And I take medicine, and I do the best I can, and I'm proud that I can do that. And those meetings, and, and doing this once a week, really keeps me on track. And I'm still trying to look for a psycho psychiatrist or psychologist. I mean, I keep pulling up my health insurance. So hopefully I'll find someone, some, someone soon. Um, the second one, you can bring yourself from dark to light. Um, something that my mother told me. If you got yourself into this mess, you can certainly get yourself out of it. And that's what she told me when I was a kid back in the 70s, and she's right. She just gave me that tough attitude, and I have to say she's right. So you have to know what's light and what's darkness. And you say that you feel that it's right for you. Now, I highly say, please stay in light of uh, the God of your understanding, but we're all different. That's the best I can say. I've met all kinds of people in my lifetime. And that's whether you learn it or not. 
video number three is about, about being above the battleground is having company with your ego. Because you just want to stay with your ego. I mean, you want to think, uh, oh, you know everything, you're powerful, and that'll give you a track of everything. And the ego can be good depending on what it is, but for some of us, the ego is just getting bad for us, you know? So we need to um, say, Mr. Ego, I'm going to kick you in the butt and give you a reality check, not like it or not. This is me, and this is my rules, and that's the way it is. Um, you would want the lightness of your God to get you out of your battleground, so that way you have peace and serenity into everything you are doing. And I do mean anything, whether you do taking care of yourself uh, in a bathroom or doing stuff in the kitchen or housework or anything, or just writing down stuff on your notepad. Use the light of your God into everything you're doing. But when I like to take a shower in the morning, I mean, you know those uh, clips that you put on the wall, they're white, and you can take them off and you put them somewhere else? Well, I have that on my, on my shower wall. I can take this big device. It's like, um, I think, maybe like eight inches by almost five inches. And I put it on the wall. And I play my rock and roll music, you know, uh, Dave Edmonds, Slipping Away, and um, Men Without Hats, Safe to Dance, a rock, 80s rock and roll. Oh, I love it. And um, oh, that's that song by the ladies. The lady, she's driving the car and they're singing that, that, that song. I forgot what it is, but... I mean, I hear rock and roll music. I boogie in the shower, you know, and it does me a lot of good, you know. That's what gets me going in the morning. Hey, I'm 57 years old, honey. Rock and roll. Disco. Starts on 45. That's what I'm into. I remember John Travolta with Saturday Night Fever, and I love Starts on 45. Oh, God, I highly recommend them. I mean, they played the Beatles song. I remember hearing about the Beatles when I was a kid. My mother wrote in my uh, baby book when I was three years old, Yellow Submarine were playing. I'm just dancing <sighs> and listening to it. So it's, so I was into music at a young age. So, and I have my good days and bad days, but I do the best I can. And we're all going to do that. We're all going to have our good days and bad days. Some days we have energy, and other days we don't have any energy at all that you just feel like laying on a couch. I had myself a good lunch this afternoon, like the, after 2 o'clock today. And I just fell asleep for like two and a half hours until I came on here. So, I mean, I was thinking maybe just do a little cleanup so I could feel better. And um, and tomorrow, I'll go on my senior bus trip. We're going to a banana festival, maybe. And that's if I can go. I'm on standby, but play by ear. My boyfriend, Mark, he has to work tomorrow. I'm going to make sure I keep my dog well fed. And Lucy, your niece, everybody, she says hello to all of you, okay? Smile, Angela. My dog loves you, okay? <laughs> Smile, Jared. And Lucy says hello to her Aunt Crystal, too. And her uh. Uncle Randy. Okay, Randy? So your niece Lucy says hello, okay? And for you, Chris and Nathan, your niece Lucy says hello. She loves you all. She's my dog. But I'm the overly protective mother. That's right. We Get it? Her That's the way I am with my dog. That's me. Thank you. <laughs> Love it. Mic drop. Mic drop, Linda. Way to oh, go. Thanks. Oh, you mentioned me in the story. Okay, thank you, Jared. Yeah. You made a cameo oh. in my story. Rock and roll. <laughs> You're so handsome, Jared. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Rock and roll. Just Rock and roll. Go. Right, Mark? What? Like he's still trying to wake up. I'm going to go see Ozzy Osbourne on Thursday, by the way. Like, the Ozzy Osbourne. I remember Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to... Oh, Chris. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, relax, Chris. We into classical music, huh, Chris, huh? I am calm. How about you, Nathan? Uh, I like... I, I tried listening to classical music, especially after hearing Ken talk about it a lot and stuff. I, I bought, like, so much Beethoven and stuff, and... Yeah, I don't know. I just couldn't do it yet. I'm not ready. I'm not going there yet. <laughs> but I, but I must say though, like yeah, like especially the 14th Symphony or whatever, like C sharp minor, and hearing some of that sad music and stuff that like the winter stuff, like like classical music. Oh my god! Like yeah, it, it really does touch the heart. It's so amazing and stuff. Like a lot of it. 
I just wish I had like a like really high high quality like super high quality headphones or something and like perfect volume and maybe like a volume that automatically adjusts or something. I don't know. But I'm like, back in the form. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I don't think Ken was listening to it, to it on that high quality back in the day. Probably just a little stereo. I had a record. Right, he probably listened to records and or live. Because, I mean, those experiences he had that he talked about where he was with live. So. I heard records actually sound pretty cool. Yep. I heard better, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool, all right. Well, uh, let's transition into forgiveness in the field. Now there are downloads and, and CDs, so and DVDs. So I mean, back in my days of thirty-three to forty-five, so that's how old I am. Thirty-threes and forty-fives. Is that is that like the small records? I think is that what that is. Anyways, forty-fives. That's the small records. Yeah, that's okay. the small one. The four okay. forty-fives. The big ones. Those are the thirty-threes. Um, how old are you, Jaron? Twenty-five. I'm thirty-eight. But thank yeah, you. If you're 25, we love you, huh? I, I received that. I love you. <laughs> yeah, tell your wife Crystal looks like she's 18. I will tell her. I will tell Aunt Crystal. She's 36, for the record. <laughs> oh, Ange oh, Angela, you look like you're 22, huh? You look terrific. I'm 37, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're 22, huh? <laughs> oh, you're just making us feel so good, Linda. We love you. I know. That's what All we right. do in New York. All right, so let's get into our forgiveness in the field. Um, I will start. So I have a little thing to celebrate with you all first. I finished chapter 22 of Journey Through the Text with Ken Wapnick. That's right. Wow. Rop, rop, rop. Oh my God. It it 27 <laughs> pages. <laughs> Journey through what? <laughs> what was that? Was that Nathan or Christian that was making those sounds? <laughs> Well, yes, bro, yes. Yeah. And guys, this is hard reading. Like, it takes everything I got to read a column. It takes me, like, 10 minutes. So, like, I'm so, like, my ego is so proud when I, like, read two pages. <laughs> like, end of the night, that's right. I'm like, I read my two pages, and I'm like, yes. Anyway, so now I'm going to read uh, chapter 22 of the course now because I already finished Ken's commentary. So I'm all locked in. But I will say this, I know this is not quite forgiveness in the field, but reading these pages, like when I do read my two pages a day of this, it, it like lights up my mind. Like my mind is like, and I'm, and I'm lit for like an hour or something like a right away, like for, for a little period of time after I read, read Ken Wapnick's uh, stuff. Anyway, so it's, I'm, I feel tremendously proud when I finish a chapter. So, um, Anyway, that's, uh, that's that. So now I'm going to go into chapter 22. I still haven't read the whole Course in Miracles. I got to get through it. But um, okay, so that was one of my big things I want to share with you guys. Uh, my forgiveness in the field this time, though, two things I want to share. Number one is um, I usually go to sleep and I notice my fear of poverty. Like I, I notice my fear of poverty and I go to sleep. And, we all had that, honey. And like last night... I noticed it and I was like, I don't know how, how something changed, but I slept really well. Like I didn't have any fear of poverty. Like it kind of went away or kind of, maybe it just, I don't know, maybe it went away. I don't know, I don't know why or how, but I just, I'm like, oh, there's my fear of poverty. And I always say my, my prayer, you know, the one I always say that I repeat all the time. And, um, so that was really nice. That was really nice to have like really good sleep. And, and, and I, I think I could see how that fear of poverty could like totally dissipate. And uh, I, I, it's like being able to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So that was cool. <clears throat> now, now to my forgiveness stuff. Um, so I was working out today in my little, uh, my little place here in my, my complex. And there's only two weights like those adjustable weights to like lift stuff. And there was already a girl in there using them and I needed to work out and she was already using the weights I use. So I was like, kind of like, okay, how am I going to work out? So I go up there and she's using them and then she's like, sets them down and she's not using them. And I could have used them at that point, but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to figure out how to do my workout without those weights. But then in the middle of it all, I said, 
wait a second. I'm going to try and look at her like not as a body. I'm going to try and look at her as, as, um, same, like the, see the sameness, not look at her as a body. Cause if I'm looking at her as a body, I'm not seeing her. And what I did was I looked at, I tried to just look at her as like, I guess, perfect spirit, perfect oneness, perfect love, total innocence, just looking at her as she really is. I don't even know this girl, but then I, when I saw her like that and stopped seeing her as a body, then I kind of saw myself also like that. And I didn't see myself as a body. Like it was, it was cool. So, um, I finished my workout. No big deal. I was in and out of there today and it was just a good experience to, to try and look beyond the body and just see the sameness between her and me and then try and take that and bring it into my home life with Crystal and with you guys on this webinar and everybody else. So that's what I got to say. You can't hear me no more or what? Can you guys hear me? I can hear you. Okay. But yeah, so, so I mean, I didn't have any like crazy forgiveness in you're, the field. You're breaking up. Really? I can hear you fine. Not sure. Christian, can you hear I me? Can hear you fine. me. Yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay. Um, oh, Mother Teresa. Mother oh. Teresa. <laughs> He showed us Beethoven before, too. Um, I yeah, love Mother Teresa. Wonderful lady. So, uh, so there you have it, guys. That was kind of like my, my week. I didn't have any really big blow-ups or anything. Um, no real big upsets. Uh, but, like, so, hey, let's celebrate it, man. Gary Renard says when you don't have a lot of stuff to forgive, then uh, celebrate. Yay. Way to go, Jared. Yay. I think I had your upsets for you. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I had two times, well, two main times this week where things just snowballed and they were, they were all loosely related things, like um, things that I, was, I watched myself make the story of how these things all came together and it's like and that's a bit of a and that's a da, da, da. you know just kind of like explosion <laughs> and one of them was last night and I just I knew I knew that it was not reality like I knew but I like had such a difficult time not believing that that's what reality was but like I I, I was like this is a story that I've created but I'm just like so in it right now that it's so hard for me not to believe that it was ugh. and then I um, drove home for like it took me 30 minutes to get home and I was just the whole time I was like forgiving 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 like the whole time and um, then working out helped uh, but yeah I don't know it's just it was definitely me seeing stuff that I was making mean to other might mean other stuff that was just Form that I believed in that I didn't have to. So I don't know. I mean, I, you hey. know it's, a... it's awesome <laughs> you caught it and you caught it fast. Yeah, it was a process too because it was this whole like, you know. Yeah. That's great though. Some, I mean, I'm sure before you had all these awarenesses and skill sets that you have now, that might have messed you up for a week or a month or who knows. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, but like, yeah. that's cool that you. Close it down, shut it down. Well, faster. <laughs> I did kind of go down this funny little rabbit hole last night that I've gone down many times before, but it was not, it was only one night, so. Yeah, that's still, hey, let's celebrate those things, man. Yeah. Like, for real. <clears throat> yeah, because you can even forgive that, too. And I, that's the same thing with me, like, last night, too. All day, uh, you know, and, and uh, yeah, like, on the level of forum, maybe it's an epic failure, but like just noticing it and like mm -hmm. being able to like, yeah, forgive yourself for that too. Right. Yeah. Like, so I'm repeating like that one thought process. Um, I am innocent and nothing at all has happened. The Holy spirit knows what I am. I'm awakening in God. I am innocent and nothing at all has happened. The Holy spirit knows what I am. I'm awakening in God. Nothing. 
Um, so I guess, are you, are you finished with your forgiveness in the field, Angela? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to add something hilarious. Linda, you um, are always like, you look like you're 22. Um, <laughs> a mother of one of my students told me, <laughs> you always look really tired when I see you. Are you in your 40s? Are you 50s? <laughs> I was like, I'm 37. <laughs> Oh, gee, thanks. <laughs> like you're still, you're still looking in your 20s, man. You look great. And you're a mother? You. I am not a mother, no. Um, no, a oh. mother. A mother of one of my students said that to me. I was like, you are alone. <laughs> you are alone, ma'am. You are alone. <laughs> in your opinion. <laughs> uh, yeah, funny. definitely. Left Girl, you, that you look tired is like saying you look like shit, right? I know. <laughs> yeah. Well, tired, so. Tired. Are you mad, bro? Are you mad? <laughs> yeah, anyways, judgment, judgment, judgment. Forgiving, 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 forgiving. <laughs> All you look wonderful. Well, thanks, Linda. You look wonderful yourself. Oh, yeah. Beetlejuice. I you know, put on a, be a little beetle juice for us. Ah. <laughs> so I guess I'll go into my forgiveness in the field, um, which was uh, pretty intense and extreme, like, all week. Like, uh, uh, I said before, like, do the workbook again, or at least if you're not doing the workbook, then at least do the rules for decision in Chapter 30. Um, because these set a framework for your day and help you to practice forgiveness more and better. And to really start that journey of like practicing forgiveness and <clears throat> to have a, a melody care, like a, Linda said, carrying God, keep the love of God within you all day, you know, and it's uh, easier said than done. Uh, for Ken, Ken at the beginning of the first video said something like forgiveness is really difficult. Uh, and it's probably the most difficult thing in the whole world. Um, like to, to become uh, enlightened or, or to like undo the ego. Um, so, but, but it, you do have help and you have the help of God with you to be able to accomplish this. So um, nothing is impossible and you can do it and you have to believe in yourself and <clears throat> it's going to take work and practice, but there's nothing else that's worth striving for. There is nothing else that's even worth striving for. And that doesn't mean that you don't have goals and you don't do what you want to do, but you, but there's something so much greater in store for us. And that's what I want above all else. I want the peace of God above all else. I want the peace of God. I want to be happy. I want to be awake. <clears throat> I want bigger muscles. I'm just kidding. I don't care about that kind of thing because what I really want is peace, love, happiness, joy, that peace of path is on passive understanding as he was talking about. <clears throat> and so I think the workbook helps and just that little willingness to grow into abundant willingness and uh, so I carry the love of God within me throughout the day and I work very, 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 very hard. And, <clears throat> and, uh, and the forgiveness opportunities don't stop coming. And, but I can kind of classify them all into one generalization and see that all I need to do is be loving and listen to the inner malos, the melody of others and reciprocate love back. And, but after um, <clears throat> five days of working really hard, and I won't get into details about what I was forgiving, just silly things at work and stuff, um, just like everything in general. And, um, and then yesterday, yeah, I kind of like, I woke up in kind of bad mood, but I noticed why. I knew that it was just, you know, the ego fighting back, trying to reinforce itself. Didn't really feel like doing the workbook lesson that much that day, even though I knew I knew damn well it would help quite a bit. But, you know, I was only able to stop myself for like no more than 20 seconds at a time max, you know, and just kept going. And, and I much rather preferred to be right than happy. And I was right about everything. I was right about every damn thing. But when I wasn't happy, I was furious. <laughs> right? And uh, so, so, yeah, just that silly ego thing. And 
you know, and, and I forgive myself for what I didn't do and I forgive others for what they didn't do too. And, um, you know, life goes on and we continue it today. Rules for decision, putting the Holy Spirit in charge. Workbook lesson, not quite, but I'll be on that. At least I'm still doing the work. So, yeah, I think that's about it. Big time. Big time. <laughs> Thanks, bro. Big time, bro. Good job, Christian. Thanks, Nathan. Um, hey, so the one that came to mind that I thought I'd share with you guys is, um, you know, I've talked a lot about my forgiveness opportunities related to work. I have a lot of them and things that I do wrong. I had a pretty awesome one, I think, last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, this one was less intense, but it was related to work. So we're working on a show and the very first cue was for uh, the president of this association um, to come on stage. And I wasn't ready and I missed it because I ex was expecting something else to happen. And then, so my response was to immediately get on calm and tell everyone I had no idea that that was about to happen even though we all kind of needed to be ready for the unexpected. And I was kind of shocked. I mean, it was totally a normal thing to say. Like I was surprised, you know, sort of like just remarking on what just happened. But I was also sort of surprised that I felt that I needed immediately needed to deflect blame, you know, instead of accepting responsibility. Um, and that thought just sort of led me to, pretty quickly to do my forgiveness work and um, some more stuff like that happened on the show, but it was all similar stuff. And I sort of just observed the same cycle of needing for it to be outside of me on someone else or on something else. And then recognizing that and then doing the forgiveness work. So that's my forgiveness in the field. Bro, yeah, great job, Nathan. Whoop. <laughs> Love it, man. It's definitely interesting uh, to notice that impulse of the ego wanting to survive and con consistently deflecting blame so that we can be innocent and projecting it out. And, and it's just like the more we w catch it and the more we catch it and the more we catch it, it's like, the more it feels like a dream, the more it's like, I'm not this body, the less we identify with the body. And it just eventually probably gets to the point where we just don't identify with our body at all. And let's go. Yeah, isn't that the path of eventually you care less and less about what's happening in the yeah, dream like, world this, and I'm more about- I'm not this body, man, I'm not this body. So what are you mad at? Yeah. Linda Pettigrew, any forgiveness in the field to end the call? Oh, let me unmute you. Okay. Any forgiveness in the field, Linda Pettigrew? Yeah, I have to try and do better on my diet. That's what I have to do. I mean, after this, I'm going to pull my station back a little bit. If I go on a station bike at night, maybe I'll make effort to go on it in the morning. I mean, it's like I'm when I wake up in the morning, I just get ready and I start my day, and that's it. I mean, on Friday mornings, I go to my tops meeting. The rest of the week, maybe I have things to do. So, and sometimes I have some books in the library that I'm reading. I'm going to get to reading them too. So, and I have to clean up the house. So, I have to committed in what I have to do. That's why I have to forgive myself. I mean, keep honest with myself about keeping to my commitment and, and I need to do that. Thank you. Awesome. Keep it up, Linda. You're doing a great job. Doing the best I can. We're proud of you. All right. So uh, that concludes our forgiveness in the field. And next week, I will be calling in from Salt Lake City. And I, I do need, though, to, to actually have y'all be aware that we're going to have to end the call uh, about 15 minutes earlier than normal. We're only going to have 45 minutes to do our call next week. 
because we, we have a business conference call scheduled right on the top of the hour. It's just how it worked out with our, our business mm -hmm. stuff. And I'm going to be in Utah. and I, Anyway, so we'll probably have to time our shares or be a little bit more laser in general um, so that we end at 45 minutes past the hour. Um, but I'll still be on. It'll still be awesome. And uh, just wanted to guys give you all the heads up about that. Um, so, uh, Christian, can you post the last four videos, I guess? Is, is that um, how what yeah, we're Yeah, absolutely. No problem. Okay, great. So, Christian will be posting those at our Living a Course in Miracles audio book club Facebook group. And uh, I, found a little, I found a little LACIM logo for our YouTube channel. I put that up. So now mm -hmm. we're like, now we're official. And um, anyway, so uh, if you're watching, you want to be on these calls, find us Living a Course in Miracles Audiobook Club on Facebook. And let's go ahead and end the, end the call with everyone saying good night and God bless. Good night. Good night, God bless. Good night and God bless. Keep it blah, simple blah, blah. Day at a time, huh? <laughs> That's all you do. Keep it simple the best you can. Nobody's perfect. You're not. All you got is, but do the best you can. That's the best you should. That's right. Good night and God bless.